This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. So, uh, two patients with VTEC storm within a week. So pretty crazy. The first case was very typical, very typical rate, patient with a baseline wide complex rhythm, and he had a uh, very atypical rate. He would go to 130s or so, and ultimately he didn't actually, he was completely asymptomatic, and it was like a day later that they decided that this wasn't an SVT and ended up treating him for a lot of different things, but he was sort of a super atypical case. But the second case was far more interesting in the context of he continued to code repeatedly in the emergency department, a much more dramatic presentation. So this is a guy who had a really unfortunate uh, aggressive cancer, was on a QTC prolonging drug from his cancer doc, and ultimately came in after he had an unprovoked syncope at home. The paramedics thought that he might have been an AFib when they picked him up, but um, he was stable for them in transport. Well, we took his initial history. Everything was going just fine. And then we got called to the room emergently, and he was in VTAC. And, of course, he was unconscious, so shocked him out of it. She told me about this history of this QTC prolonging drug and thought, okay, we're good. His QTC was actually normal on his EKG, so we thought, well, this, this doesn't even make sense. So we, of course, loaded him with amiodarone. He kind of keeps going in and out, but kind of self-resolves. So we get the amiodarone, bolus started, um, ordering the drip, getting the mag, getting ready to move him to another big room, roll him out of the room, goes into VTAC again, we shock him again. Each time he kind of comes out of it. So ultimately, of course, he's in VTAC storm, which the definition is three episodes in 24 hours or two episodes back to back. So he clearly met that criteria. He seemed to initially respond to the amio and mag. He was stable for a little bit, did it again. Obviously, we called cardiology. They came down. We had started uh, lidocaine at that point, had re with amio, and then ultimately, again, stayed stable until he got to the ICU where he was shocked ultimately s- several more times. Of course, I went and <laughs> did a little research project since I'm waiting for my third case because that's coming. Um, <laughs> Lots of different therapies, uh, but, but it's a pretty straightforward algorithm. You give amiodarone, you beta blockade them because they have an increased adrenergic response, so you want to do uh, esmolol or whatever appropriate anti dysrhythmic that's a beta blocker. You can give lidocaine um, with sodium channel blocking. Obviously, you want to determine what the cause of their problem is. So if they have a prolonged QTC, then you want to, of course, load them with a lot of mag. And if they have other electrolyte abnormalities like potassium, you obviously want to restore your potassium levels to normal as quickly as possible. Um, You want to figure out if they're having ischemia. So if they're having ischemia, they need urgent revascularization. They actually can sometimes even go to an urgent uh, rate of frequency ablation if this is so refractory that you can't control it. But what I thought was probably the most interesting thing in the research that I'd done, and we didn't even talk about this with cardiology, is you can do a stellate ganglion block, so a sympathetic block, and it can provide you with several hours of treatment for refractory VTAC. So you actually go in and anterior approach through the sternocleidomastoid, mastoid, ultrasound guided preference, preferably, but there's actually uh, tons of people apparently that are facile with us that do it without ultrasound, but we would obviously use ultrasound because there's a couple things like the carotid and the vertebral artery and stuff right there, so I would feel more comfortable with ultrasound. But <clears throat> through the sternocleidomastoid, uh, inject at the longest coli muscle at the C6 transverse process, and uh, preferentially you start on the left side. However, if you still have refractory ventricular tachycardia, then you do it on both sides. Um, I think of this, of course, in the context of working in Craig and having someone who has VTAC storm up there and not a cardiologist in sight and a two and a half hour transport. So really kind of a, an interesting and sounds like very effective treatment. Once you temporize them, obviously, get cardiology involved, see if they need to go to the cath lab, correct all their electrolyte abnormalities, find a cath lab that can you know, do a radiofrequency ablation. Is that the end of your algorithm? 
No, there's still one more thing you can do. So you can actually put them on ECMO and beta blockade them and nitro them until you can open up their coronaries and, and address all those things. So obviously you need an advanced uh, big center where you can do all those things, but super interesting. And again, just waiting for that third case. <laughs> The Emergency Medical Minute would like to thank our sponsor, Swedish Medical Center, for helping fund our nonprofit organization and make this podcast possible. Donations are essential to our organization to cover operational costs and fund the creation of our online courses offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits. So if you enjoy our show, and if you're able to make a one-time or recurring donation towards our organization, any amount is helpful. Please click the link in our show notes to make a donation Thank you for listening.